first if you're doing FRC. See if you can find a joystick. I don't know. Okay. Or, or, or put it that's fine. Okay. Like, see if you can find one. I, I won't need it for like an hour or so. Okay. <coughs> or half hour okay. or something. But we, we can, I can just put it on the comments. Fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and we have we had a couple of rookies or no? Okay. I think they want a new job. All right. So it seems like most of you have, are busy your first year. Um, has anyone done the lab before? A little bit. Okay. So we're, so we're going we're to start with the basics. Um, we'll go through the basics of kind of what, how do we do some of the basic coding lab use, some of the, the, the general ideas. Um, then we'll jump into the actual robot code. Um, and if we have some time, we can we can deploy some code on this and and, uh, and uh, maybe make it do some stuff. Um, after this session, there's a there's a session in here on uh, sensors. There's one in there on the operator interface. After that, we're going to try and do a um, kind of code integration. So we're going to try and take the stuff that we did here, and we're going to try and combine that with the stuff that the rest of your team is doing out in the quick build. And hopefully, those of you that have done the quick build will have a driving program robot by the time we leave here. Sound good? All right. So. I brought this up. I don't know that I actually want to use any slides. I think we can just, um, for the most part, we can just play around in LabVIEW. Uh, so, anyone have LabVIEW installed and ready to go? Or okay, so you y'all can follow along if you want. We um, I included the software that you need on the thumb drive on your team thumb drives. Um, I have an extra one in my pocket right now if someone wants to needs to install some stuff. And then the full version of this PowerPoint's in there too. There's a lot of really useful information on it. I'm not gonna just I'm not gonna go through this. Um, other than where there's the basic slides. Um, this is here. Okay. Also, slight disclaimer. Um, this robot's all set up and ready to go with Levy 2014 with everything for last year. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. The code base is basically identical. Um, there's a new there's a new template this year. I'm not going to go into it because I haven't actually looked at it yet. It's, again, we just we just got it today. Okay, so starting with LabVIEW. So I think most of you were in my previous session. Um, LabVIEW is a environment and language um, that we use for complicated, complex control systems. Um, and for us, it works very well for FRC. Um, So when you, like I said, I'm going to start with last year's. So when you load up LabVIEW, it should look like this. So this is kind of a, a splash screen that NI provides that's different and allows just some e easier uh, access to a lot of the tools. If it doesn't look like this, that means that you have not installed the update or that you messed up somehow. So um, there is the LabVIEW installation and then there's the FRC updates. Another really nice thing about this um, kind of splash screen they give us is there's a tutorials section. So there's a bunch of stuff here that, that um, I think it all links to the same document. It's just one giant document, but it'll link, it'll link you to this, and this gives you a lot of details about basically the stuff we're going to go over. Uh, utilities. So when it comes time to actually flash the um, robot, so that's the top tool, or set up a camera, or or, the, or you know some of these will be very important. So mainly the imaging tool and the uh, bridge configuration tool. So those are all here. So instead of having to search on your hard drive for this stuff. Um, it's actually very, very useful that's here. And then last, I mentioned that there is a hotline that you can call. Um, here it is. 
So you can just call that, and I've never actually tried it. Uh, but and I support. That's one thing that they provide. That they pride themselves as a company is that they provide very good support. So if you're lost and stuck, or something's not working, um, that's probably a pretty good idea. Uh, I'll also provide some links uh, at the end of this to other places that are good to get support for LabVIEW. Okay, so when we start, there's a couple different options here. Um, when we start our program, we're actually going to go for create an FRC RoboReal project. So the options are a BI RoboReal project and dashboard project. Um, the dashboard projects is actually going to be what's on your driver station. So when you are um, controlling your robot, that's what pops up. Um, the RoboReal project, that's actually the code that's going to run on your robot. Um, and then a blank BI is just like a um, just like one program called file on there. And we'll see a bunch of those once we create a project. So we create our first project. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, just come up with some name, the default location for it. We'll just leave that for now. Um, but I'd recommend doing something slightly different for that. And then team number. So team number is actually important to put here. Uh, this is the, this will equate to the um, IP address that you have on your robot. So when you go to connect to your robot, if you have the right um, information set here, uh, it'll work. If you don't, if you mess that up or you need to change it, it's, it's pretty easy to do. And then the last thing, there's a couple of templates that they provide. Um, pick one, this is RoboRio, unless you're specifically programming on one of the older controllers. So we're going to start with just an arcade robot, arcade drive robot. Now there is one new option this year that is not here because I'm on the old version, uh, but we won't talk about that. So when we create this, this will be the same as the one that that, is, that you create in the, new, in the new version. And it comes up pretty quick. So this is what your project will look like. So by default, it creates a bunch of files for you, and this is really a good starting point. So what you can do with this code already, without having done anything, is, is control a robot with, um, with two wheels in an arcade configuration, which means you can have one single joystick that'll go forward, back, left, right, um, simple. And it also is a good way to show, um, just a good example for how to uh, get started on this. So, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these. Uh, I think I broke something. I have about five versions of LabVIEW on this thing. And they don't they usually play nice. I don't know. I think the update broke something for me. If that does it for you, it doesn't seem to actually have any issues. So the components to a LabVIEW program. So in a LabVIEW program, the first thing we have is our project. So that stores, organizes all our files, and it also has all the files that we're going to use that get programmed onto our robot. Um, there's some, some folders that you can create just to, mainly for uh, organization. And you'll see all these little files are called, called BIs, which stands for Virtual Instrument. Um, you don't really need to know that. Just know that these are, um, each of these files just contains a section of code. And um, most of these are ones that have kind of sections that you So we open the main, this robot main. This is the kind of the highest level of the code. So this is where you would start. So for any LabVIEW program, there are two main components. There are There is the front panel, which is what you see here. Now on the front panel, you can have things like controls. When I say you can create graphs, this is where you might, where you can put some, some graph and you can three or four clicks, plot a bunch of signals. Um, so this is where you would view that. And then each front panel also has its associated block diagram. So the short <coughs> are, or I'm very used to the, to the shortcut, so I actually don't know which one. So show block diagram. So if you use this, you're always going to want to know control E. It's for show block diagram. So. Pressing Control E, 
I get my code. This might be kind of a lot all at once, but um, this is what the highest level of the code looks like. So when you see all, kind of all the components are put together here. So between our front panel and our block diagram, every component that we have on our front panel will have a corresponding component on the block diagram. The types of components you have, there's what's called a control. Uh, control is exactly what it might sound like, which is something that you control. Um, it's, it's similar to what, what you would think of as a variable if, you're, if, you, if you know a text-based text language. So to create controls, I can on, the, on this panel, I can right-click, and I get uh, this toolbar, which is called uh, a palette. And on the palette, it has controls, and the second type is indicators. So indicators are something that shows the result. So I can, I can create these, modify, and delete them, and it'll show up. So the graph, for example, on my, my front panel has this little box. And this is my indicator. So the actual code has been for, for robotics specifically, the block diagram is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Uh, this is where the actual code lives. Um, the front panel really, you, you only really use when you're debugging. So for LabVIEW, the base, kind of the basic idea of LabVIEW, let's try this. And now that I've showed you that, I'm going to take a step back. And we're going to start with an empty, empty VI. So this is, this is what it would look like if you start from a brand new file. And luckily with our templates, you don't have to do that at all. So the way that LabVIEW works uh, is a concept called data flow. So that's probably the most important con concept when you're learning LabVIEW. So if we want to create a simple program, let's say we want to um, let's say we want to add two numbers. All right. So so to create the simple program. What we're going to do is we're going to create two controls, which are going to be the two numbers that we want to add together. So call this A. Create another one. Call B. Then we're going to create an indicator. I'll we'll call this C. So that's really all we need for, the, for our front panel. And if we go back to our block diagram, as, as I said, you each each component has a has a block. And what we want to do is we want to connect these blocks. So, that, so in the same way you create front panel components, you create um, blocks in your block diagram by right clicking, and you get to your your function palette. So this is where all all the um, kind of code that you need lives. So for actually a kind of a hint here is you, you might not be able to tell what any of these are. If you hover over programming here, it'll pop out this menu, and then you can kind of tell with the names what everything is. So I want this numeric and addition. So when I hover over this, but you, you can see these three kind of dots. Those are terminals. So each terminal is either an input or an output. So our addition block is two inputs for the two things we want to add together, and then one output block for the result. So to wire this up, I left click on the, on the control, wire it to here. I'll do that for all these. And that's our basic program. <laughs> so the data flow that I talked about, the idea is that when you when you run your program, data flows through wires. It's almost analogous. It's almost similar to what you would um, see for like a circuit or something. So if I was to run this, the value that I have here, an A and B, will run along this wire, the addition block, the two inputs for for adding, and the output. And if I run that, this 
obviously, it worked. So obviously we want to make things that are more exciting than adding, but um, that's the basic idea of the platform. Data flow. Data flow is very important. Because the way that, that we do data flow, if we turn on one of our debugging tools, is a block will not execute until all of its input has has the data at, at that input. So this plus doesn't happen until A and B uh, execute. It's, it might be a little bit hard to see that, but if we turn on our, our debugging tool, we'll kind of follow these not very quick, but you can follow the data. Uh -huh. So why is that important? So if I have a second group of blocks, this set and this set will execute at the same time. If you run that again, you can see this one doesn't wait for this one. So that's, so that's uh, one of the main things that also differentiates LabVIEW uh, in that it's really not sequential. Yes? Is that then event driven so that you change one 